What's up friends? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reacting to authors bookshelves. There's a trend and certain channels on booktube. I would say maybe it's a subcategory where they dedicate their channels to reading books recommended by celebrities including Jack Edwards and on Carly. Carly made a video where she rated celebrities bookshelves and Allie from Hardback Hoarder ended up doing the same so both videos will be linked down below. So so I decided I would take this video and put my own spin on it and I'm going to react to author's bookshelf tours. All of the links will be down below of the sources I use. If you enjoyed this give it a thumbs up for engagement and if this is the first video you're seeing from me hit subscribe. I'm trying to hit 3,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I would love if you would join my community. Let's get into the video. Okay I've got some headphones and let's react. First author is Jessica Brody and this is from a playlist from Simon & Schuster. I'm going to be reacting to some YA contemporary authors that I know on this playlist. Sophie Kinsella is one of my favorite authors. I haven't read any Sophie Kinsella books but I have heard a lot about her. Entire shelf uh, dedicated to her. <laughs> so many of these books were bought from indie bookstores. Seeing the books that are behind her that I'm just like oh that that hurt. So anytime that series is shown I will not show the video because it is triggering to me. It would be triggering to other trans people watching this and I'm not gonna put you through that. I used to live in Denver. I do know that she's from Colorado. The only book I've read from her is The Chaos of Standing Still and it's one of my favorites. I really enjoy it and it is set in Colorado I believe but I did know that she's from Colorado. That's where I got to meet Leanne Moriarty, the author of um, Big Little Lies, and she signed. Oh wow! This look book at that. Me. So here's one of her signed that books. Really That's exciting. pretty cool. I like that. I've never, I haven't read this book, and I probably won't ever. But good for her. There was one time ten years ago when I was at a fabulous little bookshop in Houston called. Kind of feels like the time and place book tag, where she's really just talking about where she got her books and a lot of stories with them and I really like that. I guess it's because she is a storyteller. I like that this is a different kind of bookshelf tour. To me it's feeling like the yoke. The, the yoke. Some of the Vogue videos where it's like the 74 questions or whatever but I really like this style of bookshelf tour rather than the traditional ones that we know on booktube of you just showing every book. I really like this because she's attaching a story and really talking us through her bookshelf. And I was looking for a book to read on the plane as I went to my next city and uh, one of the booksellers handed me this book and it absolutely changed oh, okay. my life. The it Hunger is now Games. one of my favorite books in the world. I have never read The Hunger Games. I've talked about it before but I've never read it and I don't think I ever will and the only story behind it is that I was forced to read it in school and I just didn't want to because if you're forcing me to read it I'm not going to but I also had a really bad time with reading. I struggled with reading comprehension a lot throughout my life and just me being forced to read a book was not helping me. It was like one of the reading classes I had to take in high school and everybody was reading The Hunger Games and the movie was coming out and my teacher made us all just sit around in a circle at a table and read it and that's why I've never read it. It's also the reason that I write oh. young adult sci-fi oh. today. I know that this is about her sci-fi book but I didn't really know that she wrote sci-fi because I've only read her contemporary and I'm about to read Save the Cat which is a book that she wrote for writing and yeah so that's cool that she actually writes different genres. I didn't know that. At the time that I was handed this book I was writing contemporary and this is what gave me the idea to try to write wow, sci-fi. Wow that's cool. So if it weren't for that bookstore and that bookseller I might not have the series that I have today. Wow. So that's I'm unfortunate what they're by but <laughs> so Simon Schuster's series of bookshelf tours happened during quarantine. This was published in June. So I really like that idea for marketing just because we get to see what authors are up to and I think that this builds like a really personal connection. I really liked how she told a story along with her bookshelf and this was really great except for the one series she has on her shelf that everybody could just take off and put on the floor, put it in your closet. Next is Morgan Matson. She's like the contemporary queen. So let's see what she has on hers. This one didn't have a traditional bookshelf tour so I couldn't like react to what she has except the one thing. Hi, I am Morgan Matson. I am- I love Morgan Matson. She's one of my author crushes. Books. She um, is great and I love her. Is 
is Save the Date. Oh, this was before her newest book came out, Take Me Home Tonight. I've only read Amy and Roger, Since You've Been Gone, and The Unexpected Everything, so I'm very behind on her other books. I thought I would show you my bookshelves, tell you a little bit about some books and where I got them, and I just love her. about how awesome independent bookstores are. I like this. I'm wondering if this is what this whole series is, which is so great. What a great quarantine idea to make content for. And I just love that all of the authors are shouting out their local indies. Oh wow, I actually like that hers is like that. Hers is not very traditional. I would expect a lot of bookshelves to look like Jessica Brody's, like the traditional booktube setup. I really like this. I like the teal. Teal is one of my favorite colors. And here we have some of her friends. I know she's friends with Jenny Han. She's friends with Siobhan Vivian. And Stay Sweet, that's one of my favorite books. And if you don't know, To All the Boys I Love Before, one of my favorite series. Some of these other ones I don't really recognize. Um, Maureen Goo, I have read. But these other ones here, I can't tell. So maybe she'll make some commentary. Oh, okay. I love this. This is such a cool bookshelf. She has a lot of variety. Best I love that she's the, just about to plug one of her friends, Jennifer E. Smith, um, and that is I great. This, Feel Notes on Love, um, by my friend Jen Smith when I did an event with her at Romans last spring. Jennifer E. Smith I have read, but I read her when I like, first started booktube. She's just an author that I can't get into. I've read so many of her books and just I always just get disappointed and it sucks. I met her at BookCon too, so that was cool. And I got this little book about Nashville there. That's a cool idea to like collect things from where you go. Traveling what's that never heard of it <laughs> i know where i got it and i have this lovely memory of going to parnassus for the first time okay that was morgan Matson's bookshelf and honestly out of the bookshelves i've reacted to so far we only have two but i think hers is my favorite i really like that she has that setup with all of the bookcases around her tv i really like that and honestly i would want a bookshelf like that because i'm not someone who really likes the Billy bookshelves. Like I don't need a fancy setup like that. I would like to know how they categorize their bookshelves. Um, from Jessica Brody, it kind of looked like it was by genre because she had like the sci-fi and fantasy on one and then the contemporary on others. So I would like to know how they all organize their bookshelves. Okay, so hers is like a traditional bookshelf tour on booktube. You'll probably notice okay. I have a lot of mystery and suspense and thrillers on my shelves. Okay, so I see The Woman in Cabin 10. I've read. I'm not a Ruth Ware fan, but it's not that I don't like her. It's just that I can't get into her books. They just aren't thrilling enough for me and I just can't get invested into the story and it sucks because I'm sure that her books are good and I like the ideas of her books. The problem with Ruth Ware for me is that her stories are so interesting but when I read them I just don't care for it. I'm not really thrilled or into the mystery. So I see Ruth Ware, I see Ry Riley Sager, I've only read his book the one with the purple cover, I forget what it's called, Lock Every Door I think it is, but I have wanted to read more of him. I don't read enough thrillers. Yeah, so she has a lot of Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware is a pretty popular thriller author. Anna Margaret Atwood, she's a really popular thriller author. And You by Carolyn Cunness. I have that book, but I was it was given to me as a gift. We see several, Mary Kubica and Ruth Ware and Lisa Jewell, who are some of my favorite authors. And those are some authors I do recognize and I like that. I like hearing that authors have favorite authors. <laughs> okay, so my screen recording didn't record. It had an error, so now I will have to do more editing. So that's fun, but let's just see if the rest of Megan Miranda's will actually screen record for me. I left off on this part of the bookshelf. We see behind the red door. Um, I see some authors I don't recognize, but I don't read a lot of thrillers, so I wouldn't know them. Over here, I have um, my to-read pile. I like that. I love it. See, this is what I just said, is that I just want to know why they organized it a certain way, and she is giving us that. So these four books right here, um, I actually purchased recently from my local independent bookstore, 
Main Street Books in Davidson, and they are such a wonderful part of our community, and I'm very fortunate that I live close by. I know right now a lot of us are home and a lot of physical stores are closed, but I was still able to purchase some of these through the bookstore by shopping through bookshop.org. Get that bookshop plug. I love that she plugged bookshop. That is definitely a resource that has been used a lot during quarantine, myself included. I love it. I have a whole page down below if you want to see and purchase some books that I talk about in my videos. I have a whole shop. It'll be linked down below. And if you don't know what bookshop is, it just lets you order online from your local independent bookstore and I love it. It's one of my favorite resources. I really like her. Hers is so good. I really like that bookshelf too. It's cool. Um, it looks like she has more throwers on the top, but I do like how she separates from her TBR. I put my TBR on my TBR cart, so I'm wondering if maybe any authors have TBR carts, but these are the videos that I can react to for now, but now I'm going to switch over to the Strands website where they have a curated list of author bookshelves. The first author is Carmen Maria Machado. She is a great author and she wrote in The Dream House, which is one of my favorite nonfiction books. This says, the author's bookshelf recommended reading from Strand's favorite writers. So here I'm just going to scroll a little bit and see what I know and then I'll do some commentary. <laughs> well, she has her own books on here, great. Boundless by Jillian Tamaki. I've been wanting to read Jillian Tamaki. Back from Mooney Reads, they recommended that author, I think either on their TikTok or on YouTube. I've only read Jillian Tamaki through her work with her cousin, Marika Tamaki. If you would like to see me turn this into a video where I read the books that I reacted to, comment down below one of the authors I've reacted to in this video, and I will go through the comments and the one that has the highest votes I will read. These are all really interesting and I have not heard about any of them. Through the Woods I have heard of, but this is pretty interesting. I have not really heard of any of these, which is cool because I like to see new books that I haven't heard of on booktube. But I do want to read more of her work because I really loved In the Dream House. So I know Her Body and Other Parties is a really popular one. Okay, so that was Carmen. This gives me a pretty clear vision of her bookshelf. I would imagine that she reads poetry and literary fiction. It just tells me the titles and the covers. So I have not really seen a lot of these, but I imagine that they're literary fiction. Beloved by Toni Morrison, I have heard of, um, but I really like this. It shows a variety of different genres. And the last author's bookshelf I'm going to react to is Elizabeth Acevedo. One of my favorite books by her is Clap When You Land. I think it's fantastic and I can't wait to see what she has on her bookshelf. I imagine that it'll be some YA and maybe some nonfiction and all of that. When My Brother Was an Aztec by Natalie Diaz. That's one I've heard of. Black Enough I Have Wanted to Read on the Come Up is fantastic. One of my favorite books of the year that I've read so far. Dear Martin is a good one. Shout. I've been wanting to read that. The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. I need to read that book. I'm gonna read all of her books because I read Party of Two for a video and I loved it so much. We have Jason Reynolds, The Boy in the Black Suit. I have not read that but I've been wanting to because he's one of my favorites. When I was researching for this video, I was like, I would love to see his bookshelf. I'm surprised that he wasn't in any of those videos. Um, I'll see if I can find his bookshelf if I do a part two of this video. So that was me reacting to author's bookshelves. All of the resources will be down below if you would like to see for yourself. Give this video a thumbs up for engagement if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe if you haven't. And comment down below any author I have reacted to in this video and the highest requested author, I will read books from their bookshelf. Thank you all for watching. I have a Patreon if you'd like to support me there for more fun videos like this. I hope you're all having a great day and staying safe and I will see you next time. Bye.